it's Rob! Tony! We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello inmates and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. And on Reddit today, I stumbled across a post called Moonglade Portal Analysis. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Hearthstone's Reddit, there's a lot of good information there. And that's where I, I learn a lot myself. And also, I pull a lot of the things I say or the information I gather from here. So if you, you haven't checked the Reddit out for Hearthstone, I do recommend it. As it's a really valuable resource to the beginner player, intermediate, and even you veteran or expert players. Um, really great information. So this video is actually going to be on uh, an analysis another uh, player did, uh, Macho Cat. So thank you, Macho Cat, for making this. This is very interesting information regarding the new card coming out in the Karazhan Adventure Mode, Moonglade Portal. So when you, I haven't actually covered this card in our... Um, our Karazhan reveals because this is going to be in part four and we only have up to part three right now So sorry for a jump in the gun here, but it's definitely a cool card and I wanted to go over the analysis of it um, So even when we do our review, we'll talk about it a little then for the card states um, It's a six mana card for the druid class and it says restore six health summon a random six, six cost minion So you think of it you're like all right Well for six mana you're getting six HP and you're getting a six drop minion So for six mana you're already spending it on a six drop minion anyway And you just happen to be getting the six health on top of that It's also a spell so it combos well with Yogg and um, Violet Teacher and things like that But the randomness of the six drop minion is a, a worry right because with cards such as um Faceless Summoner that are already out that summon like random three drops or Firelands Portal which is not out yet but summons a random five drop. The vari the, the variance in the um, the five drops is great, right? You could get a really bad five drop um, or you could get a really, really good five drop. And we were this, basically this uh, analysis goes over the best and the worst case scenario of Moonglade Portal for those of you who are looking to play it. So I kind of wanted to go over it a little bit, uh, give my thoughts on what this uh, whole write-up is and um, kind of share to you what this uh, what this post was about. Again, I'll throw the post of this um, this uh, this post in the description for you guys to check out on your own. If you don't want to watch the video and you just want to look out on your own, that's totally fine. But I thought this was some good information about a new card that I, I wanted to share with you guys. So again, I did not write this. Thank you, Macho Cat, for doing that. So currently, we're going to be looking at standard mode. Again, I'm not going to go over wild as I do not play wild in the variety. The, the amount of uh, players who play wild is not very high right now, so I don't want to waste uh, you guys' time. If you want to go over wild, if you just scroll down in the post, wild starts here, and it goes down there. So we're going to only talk about standard. So currently, there are 51 six-mana minions in the standard set. Um... And then Karazhan will add uh, at least uh, two, the Bookworm and the Ivory Knight, increasing the number up to 53. Uh, the biggest attack minion that you're going to be able to get from Moonglade is uh, nine. The average attack being 9.2. So you're, when you basically when you play at the average, you're going to get anywhere between around, I would roughly say about five is what nine uh, or 4.92 means. The lowest attack being two, and that's the under the worst sex in here, Corrupted Seer, which is a 2%. So hopefully you don't get two. That would be really bad. Uh, both being nine, which is, I think, falls under the good section, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I think just for stats, he's pretty good. I mean, a three nine, even though your opponent can just attack face and kill him, he's still a pretty good card if you're in a pinch, uh, especially if you're trying to heal yourself. Obviously, there's a reason, and both might actually be uh, a good card on uh, for that time. Uh, the biggest uh, average health is 5.11, uh, which is good, and the lowest health we went over is 2. So we'll look at the tier list here, and I'll, I'll kind of, uh, we've already talked about worse, so let's look at great and good. So under great, we have Karen, which is a really great value. We have Emperor, which is, of course, good. Hogger, which is like value over time, right? So you're essentially, uh, at the end of your turn, you're getting the 2-2 two, two taunt. Sylvanas, which is, again, great. Uh, Argent Commander, this is the one I was kind of iffy on, because if you look down here, we see Illidan under good. But Argent Commander is going to be under great. And this is, uh, I'm assuming Argent Commander because he has Charge and Divine Shield. So you can like make a trade right away, right? Um, but when I think of Illidan, I think of kind of like Hogger. How you, if for every card you play, you're going to generate value. And in a Druid deck, a popular Druid deck right now is Token or Yogg. Which there's a ton of spells. And a lot of spells within the deck that buff creatures that you have on the board. So with Illidan out, I think the, those two uh, will combo well. A lot more so than the Argent Commander. So I'd actually move Illidan up to great. Um, for this particular, you know, it being a druid card and most likely being used in the druid class, in particularly maybe a yog or, or a yog druid or a token druid deck. Um, for the Savannah High Main, of course, a fantastic card. Sunwalker, fantastic, and our dark. 
uh, barbacoa as I call him uh, definitely great for good we went over both the skeleton knight uh, it's a 7-4 so he's basically like salty dog but he has a death rattle that says whenever this card uh, dies joust it and if you win um, it goes back to your hand so there's a lot of value with the skeleton knight uh, mysterious challenger he's there just for the 6-6 six, six stats so is the ski or uh, the sea reaver uh, the cultist is a 7-6 so most of the good uh, cards are there just for the stats uh, looking down here there most of them are 6-6s six, and 6-7s six, uh, six, besides the reckless rocketeer and the drake so the reckless rocketeer would be in the good section for its charge and the drake in there for the fact that it's a 6-6 and you can use your hero power multiple times uh, if we look down at the average section uh, the cards in again bold uh, he uh, puts in depending on the situation so obviously if you're looking to draw Normally, the auctioneer is only a 4 4 in stats, but its ability it says for every time you cast a spell, you draw a card. So, depending on the situation, the auctioneer could in fact be better than, you know, the Illidan or the Skeleton Knight. So, that's why those guys are in bolt, and he points those out. Again, a very, I, I enjoyed this post very much, and I, I like the read on it, and I definitely like the information I obtained from it. And, um, that I just wanted to share it to you guys. I know it's a little bit off the coast of what we do, and I normally kind of compile the information myself, but this is just one of those posts where this Moonglade Portal, I think, is going to be a card that's going to be played a lot. And um, you, if you're going to be playing it, you want to know the percentages of, hey, am I gonna, is it worth playing or is it not worth playing? And if I do play it, what is the chances that I get something decent? And uh, more times than not, you will get something good based on the percentages given here. And even if you get a not so good card, like worst case, you play a six drop and you get a black knight. So you've healed yourself for six and you've played a four or five. Still not too bad, not great, but the chances again of uh, uh, average or higher is more than bad or worse. Um, and these percentages have been uh, done on Yogg as well, where Yogg more times than not will do good for you than bad. Uh, as we know, that changes, and this is not going to be super consistent, but at least we have a general idea of where this card stands before it comes out and it is played. So, if again, if you're looking for this uh, post, I will put it in the, the link to the description. Again, I did also not write this. Macho Cat did. Thank you for that. And um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this small little tidbit of information I came across and I thought it was really cool. I think we missed over. Um, yeah, we missed over. Or went over. Did not go. Wow. Did not go over terrible. And that's going to be the Miss Caller, uh, Miss Caller, Fizzle Bang, Kidnapper, Prophet and Ivory Knight. All of these cards are basically four fours <laughs> and um, they're just not that great. Uh, you, if we're going for stats here, as we saw the good has the 6-6 six, six in stats, the 6-7s and things like this. And then for the terrible, it's basically you're just getting reduced value in the stat of the creature. Not so any abilities you're missing out on. So we'll end it here. Uh, I know it was short, but I want to kind of wanted to get that to the point. And um, hopefully you've enjoyed and found the information useful or will eventually be useful when the cards come out. So as always, guys, I'm Warshack, of course, and happy whatever the hell day it is. <laughs>